Now let's add images. Remember that at the beginning of the, this activity, uh, the instructions had you download uh, the images and put them in a folder called resources. So you want to make sure that you've done that. So here's all the images. They're inside a folder called resources, which is in the same location as learning.html. So now that we've got those located, uh, we're going to add them so that they show up in the web page. So if we scroll down to our first image, which is under practice testing, and right here it says here's an image. We're going to use an image tag, and that is the IMG tag. Now, an IMG tag is an empty tag. This is the first time that we've used an empty tag. And, and, and it just simply means there's no content in it. So it doesn't have a closing tag. So all the others, we've had an opening and closing tag, and we've put something between that opening and closing tag. But that's not the case with image. Image will simply be a single tag. And there are a couple of attributes we're going to put in here. One is the SRC attribute. This is the source attribute. And here we're going to put the name of the image file. So I'm going to move that image file up there, testing.jpg. And I save it, and I come and refresh. And oops, I get a broken image tag. That means it couldn't find that image tag. So let's go look at it. So here we are in learning HTML, right? That's where I'm typing. And I said, go find this image called testing.jpg. So it looked for a file called testing.jpg and couldn't see it. Well, where it is is inside this folder called resources. So I've got to tell it to look inside that folder. And the way that I do that is in front of the file name, I put the name of the folder, in this case resources, and a slash. Now what it says is go into the folder called resources and look for a file called testing.jpg. So let's save that and refresh. And now it was able to find it. And there you go. You want to be able to, it's really easy to see if it worked or not. So that's great. Now the next thing that I want to put, and uh, this is important for accessibility, is the alt attribute. And the alt attribute is we're going to put text that is the equivalent of the image. So if somebody doesn't see the image, uh, they can get the information from the alt attribute. If they have a screen reader that's reading it to it, they can, they can hear it. Um, if they just have their images not off, they can read the text. So I'm going to go ahead and put this description here, a child thinking of questions and answers. And then I'm going to get rid of these notes. Oh, and here I am. I dropped over my 80 character limit again. So I'm going to break it at this attribute, and there we go. All right, so now I have the source attribute and the alt attribute. And I refresh, and <clears throat> there's the image. The alt attribute doesn't show up unless you're not seeing your images. Important for those who don't see images. The next thing is uh, we want to put a height and width on here. And the reason for doing this is the web browser will load the text of the web page first, and then it will load any external files, such as image files. And if it loads the text first, and then it loads the image, then the things move around to make room for the images. But if we put a height and width attribute on these, then the page, as it loads the text, the browser will save that space and fill it with the image later. And so it stops any flickering that might happen. There are two ways to do that, to do this. One way is to simply add the width attribute. And now I want to make it, I'm going to make it exactly the size of the image. So if I go in here and I find this image, I can see that it is 400 by 333. The width is the first value. And the second one is the height is the second value, which is 333. Now these width and height attributes will, um, by default, they are pixels, period. That's what they are. So they're already defined as pixels. Again, this won't make any difference because we made it exactly the same width and height of the image. But it will stop any flickering that might happen. All right, so those are the attributes that we want to use with image. The source attribute, the alt attribute, the width and height. Let's do one more. 
And so here's this one. I'm going to do the image tag. And the source is going to be, remember that I have to put the, the folder slash and then the name of the file. So there's the name of the file. And then I'm going to put the alt attribute. And here's that description. And I'm going to call this a comparison of concentrated versus distributed practice. Get rid of the notes. And then I'm going to show you the other way to add the height and width. And this is with the style attribute. And W3Schools recommends this version. You use the style attribute and you set the width. And now notice that it's a colon, not an equal. And it's all inside one set of quotes. Width, and you're going to put 400. And now you do need to put, um, pick the unit and say these are 400 pixels. And then I'm going to add the height. And it's going to be 333 pixels and a semicolon. So notice how you have a semicolon between each value. So this is the one that W3Schools recommends. All right, we've got three more images. I'm going to pause this video and go finish those. You go ahead and finish them on your code. Okay, now that you get them, and when, when you get them added, be sure and refresh and look it up. I forgot to do that in the last one. But it helps to just refresh and make sure that everything works. Okay, and that they're all showing up. And that's how you add images.